Welcome everyone and thanks so much for joining us for today's webinar. My name is Mary Ann Hinsley. I'm the Vice President of Media Operations for FreightWaves and we are happy to present today's webinar in partnership with our friends at Turbo. Today you're going to be hearing how companies can work to create frictionless logistics and exceptional customer experiences through supply chain collaboration. Joining me will be Kate Karkanis, Chief Product Officer at Turbo, and John Perkovich, who serves as Chief Operating Officer for RPM. We'll also have a live Q&A with both speakers following this discussion. And before we get started, just a couple of quick housekeeping items. First, if you have any issues during the webinar, you can reach out to our team via the audience chat function in your webinar console. And if you have questions that you would like to ask our speakers, you can enter those through the Q&A box in your console, and we will answer as many of those as possible during the live audience Q&A following the discussion. We will also be sending a link to the recording of this webinar tomorrow in case you'd like to view it on demand or share it with your colleagues. And at this point, I would like to go ahead and welcome Kate and John. Glad to have you both here today. And if you don't mind, just tell us a bit about yourselves before we get started. Kate, would you kick us off? Of course. Uh, thank you so much for hosting us. John, really excited about our conversation and just want to straight off the bat thank you and the RPM team uh, for the incredible partnership over the years. Uh, thank you for joining this webinar with us. My name is Ketan Karkhanis. I am the Chief Product Officer at Turbo. Been in Turbo for more than a year, uh, run product engineering and customer success. And, um, you know, addressing problems in the supply chain has become sort of a passion project now. So really excited about the next tower. Thank you, and uh, I share those comments, Keaton. Um, John Perkovich, Chief Operating Officer. I've been at RPM for about nine months now. Um, and RPM was founded in 2012 with a mission to focus on the underdeveloped markets while creating exceptional experience for our employees, our customers, and our carriers. Today, we arrange over 1,000 shipments a day divided between vehicle and freight. So we move full truckload, full vehicle loads, LTL, and less than, uh, less than a full truckload vehicle load. And um, we're excited to be here. Excellent. Thank you both. And John, I really want to start with you. First, I just want to hear a little bit about what's happening at RPM post-COVID and what was the impact on your customers and your business during that time? Yeah, first want to touch on just the resiliency and determination of our employees. Um, it's, it's like I've never seen before. They've worked extremely hard uh, from home, making sure that we never skipped a beat, that we always delivered on our promises to our customers. We're excited we're going to be back at 100%, uh, at least in Royal Oak, where, our head, where we're headquartered, uh, on August 2nd. We're currently around 50%, and uh, we cannot wait to have everybody back. Uh, the, the market's been challenging. We've, we've experienced, obviously, the pandemic like everybody else. We're currently also going through um, some issues with our customers and their supply chain with the chip shortage. So the last uh, you know, 18 months or so have been extremely challenging but we've worked together through collaboration, uh, increasing customer or communication with our customers to uh, understand their needs uniquely and not just a broad uh, general um, conversation, but getting really specific to their needs and on the challenges that they're facing and how we can work together to uh, come up with solutions. Got it. And I know that RPM has been on its own digitization journey. And so with that, what prompted your partnership with Turbo? And moreover, why digitization and why now? Yeah, I mean, I, I think uh, it's, it's important for us to, um, you know, be digital, um, not only because we need to keep up with our competition, but also we want to make sure that we are creating the best experience, like we said earlier about for our employees for our customers and our carriers. Um, it's important for us to, to do more. Um, relationships and technology are critical at RPM, and we couldn't do it without um, the technology that companies like Turbo and our other partners, as well as our proprietary software, uh, allow for us to do it. One of, one of the things that we really enjoy uh, with Turbo, which allows for us to work with our customers, is the uh, we can share a tracking link. Uh, it works real well with our B2C customers. That way we're not um, asking our employees to constantly update the customer. It's right there in front of them. They can follow their shipment journey uh, through a link. It's a, it's a great user experience. They can see their shipment on a map and the updates along the way. 
Um, additionally, we're, we're working towards a marketplace. Uh, it's out there today in some regions with a lot of our carrier partners where they can actually get the right shipment for their needs. Instead of us offering them a bunch of shipments, we're uh, prioritizing uh, their needs to profiling and understanding what they truly want to make sure that we're not offering them shipments that really make no sense. And the marketplace is great. Uh, it's getting better and better every day with more density. Uh, and we're excited to see where that takes us uh, in, in the future. I mean, just to jump in out there, John, I mean, you hit on a couple of very important points, right? In your first comment, you talked about the past 18 months and and you guys should take some credit because you guys didn't skip a beat. Uh, and, and I know that because I, we are the technology provider and my job was basically to ensure technology is the last thing you worry about and you are only focused on your customers. Uh, and so congratulations to Team RPM on, uh, on navigating. You know, good organizations are defined by how they navigate crisis. And you and your team have done a marvelous job doing that. So, and on the digitization front, you brought up two very simple points, but they have profound implications to the customer experience and productivity for you. Uh, and I think so that ties to the heart of how do you really have a maniacal focus on taking every business process you are interacting with and digitizing it, liberating it from email and follow-ups and phone calls and text messages to digital. Um, that's a huge booster for especially a tough competitive situation and a market like freight movement. Um, so really, really excited by the progress you guys are making. Absolutely. Uh, we at RPM, we, we know that um, 90 to 95 percent of our shipments are going to go without an issue. And so our ability to manage by exception, um, working with tools like the ones that Turbo provides us is, is critical uh, for our business. We want to make sure that we give all the attention to the issues, working with our customers and our carriers um, to create um, you know, proactive solutions, but also troubleshoot in real time. And uh, like you said, it's, it's really managing by exception. Yeah, it's like focus on things that need your attention rather than everything that's coming your way. We all get inundated by 100 emails in the inbox. And that's just not the scale of business. Uh, so yeah, we're uh, exceptions. You're right. Uh, and, uh, and I hope you guys are enjoying our exceptions and autopilot features. They are really incredible. Absolutely. It allows us to do more. And I wouldn't, uh, I, I, I'm glad you brought up our success. We actually, we are experiencing our um, second consecutive best quarter in our company's history, and we're extremely wow. proud. Yeah, we got to actually celebrate with Anthony from Turbo, our account manager. He was in the office yeah. last week working on some uh, further development of the tools and our abilities to use them. And uh, it was actually a really nice partnership between Turbo and RPM to, sh to share in each other's successes uh, last week. That's awesome. Congratulations on a great quarter. Thank you. Yes, congratulations, and, and kind of keeping things moving forward. You know, we really hear the word visibility thrown around a lot, especially today, and we all know it's important, but it also means different things to different people. So, John, at RPM, how do you truly drive transparency and visibility across your supply chain, and what does that really mean for the company? Yeah, we kind of look at visibility as like a window in, um, a peek into the, how the shipment is is progressing. Um, you know, we're a tech-enabled transportation provider, uh, and we take a lot of pride in that. Uh, we can help identify uh, current gaps in the supply chain and assist our shippers to fill those gaps or work with uh, with them. The real-time visibility tools uh, give shippers an up-to-the-minute uh, holistic view of how they're uh, not only their freight, but also their vehicle uh, supply chains are performing. Uh, and it, everybody loves um, pinging and, and understanding where shipments are. We want to take that one deeper and, and not only give the update of how the shipment's progressing, but like I said earlier, managing the exceptions where they, uh, when they happen. And, and that's, that's the kicker, right? I mean, visibility 1.0, I call it, was just telling you... <laughs> Uh, where stuff is, right? Okay, fine. What's the point about knowing something if you can't do anything about it? Uh, you know, it's it's it sounds pretty simple, but it is. You know, you uh, and that ties to the point John made is when you see something, you want to act on it. Most importantly, you don't want to see everything. You want to focus on things that need your attention 
And slowly, as you can see, Marianne, we are defining visibility 2.0, which, mm -hmm. which is about focus on a prioritized list of things that need your attention. And when something goes beyond the guardrails you have set up for your business or your relationship with your customer, you should be able to act on it in context, not have to swivel chair, go to another product, go to this, go to that. Um, and I think so that's what uh, is key because for us, it's visibility 2.0 is not just seeing things, but addressing them and collaborating with your customers and your ecosystem. So it's three things all rolled up into one. And that's like visibility 2.0. I think so that's where the industry is going. In fact, all of our customers are already there and I'm sure more will join. I couldn't agree more. And if I can add, is as important as it is for, for shippers, it's also equally important for carriers too that when issues are happening, uh, whether they are caused by delays or out of their control, it's, it's really on uh, transportation providers, brokers, um, to work with the shippers to get that shipment uh, delivered as quickly as possible, proactively troubleshooting, whether it be dock appointments or uh, making sure that labor is available to unload the truck. Not every shipment's gonna go according to plan, but if we work together, uh, shipper, broker, and carrier, it will make for a seamless and, and uh, better experience for everybody involved. Absolutely. And, and you mentioned visibility 2.0, Kate, and, and obviously mm -hmm. the importance of collaboration as a part of that. Um, mm -hmm. So, John, is collaboration or collaborative logistics an area where RPM is, is really investing? And where do you feel like that fits into kind of your bigger transformation picture? Yeah, so we understand the, the, the fun part about RPM is that we don't just work in one vertical um, we work with uh, vehicle customers. Um, we work with uh, freight customers, customers that have uh, high and heavy shipments. Uh, and so we understand that there are all different ways to tender us a shipment uh, via API, EDI, email, over the phone. Um, and so we want to take those shipments in and collaborate with them on really what's the best way to, um, to move those shipments. Some customers will, will tender us 300 vehicles uh, and they just need them picked up by a certain date. Some customers will give us hundreds of pallets and they just need them shipped out in the most cost effective way. Uh, we have an order management uh, system that takes all that in, uh, considers the, the weight requirements, considers the size of the vehicle required, and we try to uh, optimize the route. Um, some have multiple picks, some have multiple delivery. And so collaborating with our customers on the most cost effective and highest quality um, means to sh uh, transport that shipment. Additionally, that feeds nicely into our marketplace like we touched on before where carriers can come in and they can say, you know, this shipment um, works perfectly with another one that I have, whether it's a backhaul uh, or it's a, um, a lane that they are not dense in and they want to try to uh, add additional volume to that corridor. Uh, additionally, in the vehicle space, uh, car haulers will have a nine car stinger, we like to call it. So there'll be nine car spots on it and they might not have a full load. So they might only have six uh, spots, or, sorry, six spots taken on their, um, on their truck. And we help offer out uh, three more uh, VINs um, to, to make sure that they're full from point A to point B. And that's, uh, that's really what, how we look at it from a collaborative uh, standpoint. Yeah, I mean, think about it, right? It's kind of interesting if you if you look at more than seventy percent of the supply chain participants are not within the four walls of your company. I mean, they are not people sitting behind John in that beautiful office space of his, which we should talk about because I visited I visited <laughs> RPM recently, and I'm telling you, it's it's like a tech company. You know, it's it's like a proper legitimate tech organization. It's just mind-bogglingly amazing. Uh, and uh, but the idea is not all of them are back there. You know, for everything John and his team need to do, seventy percent of the people are not within the four walls of their company, and uh, there is no other way but to collaborate and to do a and to do that in a digital sense, to do that in context of that particular stinger or whatever he's talking about. <laughs> and not, not <laughs> now I'm not a transportation specialist, clearly. Uh, and, and, and that is key. I think so for too long, we have talked, we have thought about supply chain as 
technology for logistics or supply chain as primarily, oh, I need yet another TMS, or oh, I need yet another uh, XYZ system. But the idea is none of them actually address the fundamental mechanics of the supply chain, which is it's distributed, it's fragmented, it's across the world, and you need to tie all these participants on a digital network. You know, that's what sometimes jokingly I called as RPM net. You know, that's RPM's network. And Turbo is giving that technology to uh, provide that collaboration. So it's pretty exciting what's happening out there. And progressive companies, uh, technology forward companies are having tremendously successful quarters. Uh, and if you're not, you're not. Yeah, I think too, I mean, our customers, you know, we, we have to give them the most, uh, the best cost possible to move their shipment. And we've identified that one of the best ways to do it is to removing or automating the repetitive task as much as possible. I think what you're saying is, it's not only is a collaboration, it's understanding where automation, um, you know, can, can apply. What can we do to remove um, some of the labor intensive activities that technology is, is being able to automate or, or streamline better, uh, you know, load scheduling, um, offering shipments out. We were talking about that earlier. You know, how do we offer our shipments out quicker using tools that Turbo provides? How do we cut down on the back and forth with carriers regarding payment uh, using the the uh, tenant, the carrier tenant, which gives carriers the, the ability to see where they're, uh, invoices in the process, if there's any rejections or any missing paperwork, those things allow us to give our customers a, a better price, a more cost competitive quote, and really a better experience because we're focused on, on our customers and our carriers and their experience and less about the repetitive processes that have really plagued this uh, industry for a long time. Keep doing the same thing again and again, hoping for a better <laughs> alternative. That That's never right. happens. That's it right. It just never happens that way. <laughs> Absolutely. And I, I, John, I want to hear a little bit more about that experience. What impact have you seen digitization have on your customer experience? And what are, what are the results of that so far? I think the number one uh, result has been our ability to um, quickly source capacity for their shipments. Uh, our customers uh, expect us to find every available truck possible for all of their shipping needs. Uh, so using uh, smart load tendering, smart load boards, um, which will feed into a better end-to-end -end digitization, uh, analytics, uh, and then, of course, like we talked about earlier, the uh, real-time uh, GPS tracking links that Turbo uh, allows us to share right from our, our, our system to our customers. It depends on the size of the customer. Not every customer is going to want to get a tracking link uh, for all 300 shipments they might give us in a month. But um, those tools apply uh, in Turbo where we can share that link or we're connecting with other data um, or tracking aggregators, excuse me, to make sure that we're giving our customers that visibility that they um, that they ask us to provide them on every shipment. Uh, additionally, you know, we look at it as one of the benefits are the zero capital investment. Our technology, uh, thanks to Turbo, is available to our customers with no minimum, whether you do one shipment or you're doing 100 shipments. All these tools are available to our customers uh, every single day. Um, we actually, we, we find, we were talking about earlier, um, Keaton, about the uh, ability to collaborate and work together on our centralized platform. So RPM, even though we do work with different uh, verticals, we do have one centralized uh, place, which is Turbo's um, uh, load board. And, and, and we, we find that that allows us to update our customers as quickly as possible to troubleshoot um, and, and really give transparency a, a look in like we talked about earlier. It's an interesting point you brought up uh, very subtly that the capex, you know, you, you dollars are precious no matter how well you're doing. Mm -hmm. Resources are precious in all our organizations. And digitization doesn't have to mean a hefty bill because here's the trick, right? Just you can't go digital. You have to have your customers and your ecosystem also digitize. Otherwise, you fall down that analog cliff. You're digital, 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 and suddenly you fall down the analog cliff because this particular customer doesn't have that technology and now you have to email them. Uh, so that's why fundamental to Turbo's business model is allowing your customers and your ecosystem to have Turbo at no additional cost to you. 
And that's what we call our network-centric data model. Uh, and that makes the job of rolling out technology not a CapEx endeavor, uh, but a more of a transformation exercise. Uh, mm -hmm. And I, I, that's very exciting to us. And I wanted to be sure all the viewers understand a, a very important point John had mentioned. Great. And John, as far as the carriers themselves, how are you seeing them impacted by your advances in technology? Yeah, we talked about uh, our order management um, system as well as our marketplace. We, we believe that this is all coming together to create a more simplified workflow. It allows for them to uh, focus on shipments that, that fit their needs versus sifting through uh, posting sites and um, getting emails and phone calls all day for shipments that really don't uh, pertain to them. So we, we like we said, the, the simplified workflow, um, you know, really auditing their um, receivables, and 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 we have the ability to immediately pay our carriers. This this allows for a better experience. Trucking companies, truck drivers have a lot to worry about. And for us, we want to make sure that their experience with our PM on how they get shipments and how the shipments get settled is the last thing they have to worry about. Um, providing them with real-time information, less error, errors, excuse me. Um, you know, we want to keep their trucks full. We want to make sure that the drivers and the carriers are getting uh, the right shipments uh, every single day um, and really be a, a one one stop shop for for all of their um their needs whether it's going to be one vehicle or one pallet or a full truckload of vehicles or a full truckload of uh, of freight we profile our carriers every single day we ask them on the front end what their needs are to make it for a much more seamless experience in the back end um and we found that to be um um widely accepted and appreciated from our from our carriers All right, great. And then moving on, tell me a little bit about the flywheel effect. Um, what is it, what effect is it having on creating a more streamlined carrier experience and what does it ultimately mean for your end customer as well? You know, I, I think, uh, you know, the flywheel and, and streamline experience can be looked in a lot of different ways. Um, you could even call it the, the chicken versus the egg. For us, we want to make sure that we fill up um, we want to have as much as dense of a network as possible. We want to get as many shipments in there uh, to match as many carrier needs as possible to create a frictionless experience. Uh, we, we believe the more density drives better cost, uh, reduces deadhead, um, and gives the carrier and the customer uh, really the experience that they that they deserve. Um, it, it allows for us to also create a more personalized uh, load matching experience for the carriers. Um, we start to understand where they're going to continuously have um, gaps in their needs uh, on the carrier side. So we can start to um, offer out shipments in advance based on, on historical information saying, you know, we know you're going to be in St. Louis next Tuesday because you've taken a shipment from us every Tuesday out of St. Louis. Let's start talking about how we get that shipment over to you in advance. Um, as we continue to build out our network of, of shipments, uh, in addition to our network of uh, available carriers, it's going to create a much more uh, dense and better experience uh, as it pertains to the flywheel. All right, great. Kate, Kate was nodding. I, I wasn't sure if he was going to jump in there for a no, second. No, I, mean, I, I mean, he said it all. I want to jump in, but I can't say anything more profound, so I'm just going to zip it. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> all right. And then kind of ultimately, how do you feel like your partnership with Turbo is helping to drive transformation within your organization? And what is your end goal or vision for this partnership? Yeah, you know, I think um, it continue to build upon the integrations, um, collaborate on the current automation capabilities, but more importantly, where can we automate in the future? Um, we've touched on the centralization that Turbo provides us, and and we we love um, how it optimizes the experience for for not only our customers and for carriers, but you know, our employees as well. And I think the number one thing is is really to continue the conversations that we have around uh, best practices and and where the where the industry's headed, 
And I, I think it, it all starts with, with sessions like this, where we, we talk about um, our, our, our experiences, our customers and our carriers uh, feedback when collaborating on, on the issues that they're having, and then communicating that back and forth with Turbo and, and then seeing what they can come up with to help address these, these needs. Yeah, I mean, you know, one of the best meetings I had with RPM and they've been with us for a little bit was, we spent a whole day at RPM just recently, less than a month ago. And that and that's the best part of my job is, uh, you, you know, you can go spend a whole day with a customer. And, and we really got immersed in not, hey, what features are you building, Ketan, versus, you know, we need X, Y, Z, but what is the strategic direction uh, RPM is heading, Sergio, the entire RPM leadership team, Turbo leadership team, we were in the room talking about here's where RPM is going in the next three to five years. Rather than making it a technology-centric discussion, here's where the business needs to go. And now we fill in the gaps with what is the technology we need to um, you know, turbocharge that particular growth. Uh, I feel like that's one of the ethos of Turbo is we are not here just to throw more technology over the fence. Um, we want to have an impact on the business. We want to be part of that transformation journey you are undertaking. Um, so for example, you know, now spending a lot of time with John and his team, not just on cool marketplace functionalities, but also doing the basics incredibly well. Uh, and he mentioned employees. See, this is also an important point. Uh, how can we improve our interfaces, our workflows, such that employee productivity keeps going up? Uh, and that has a direct correlation to not just margins, of course, but customer experience. Uh, so we are not just looking at cool stuff, you know, awesome DFM capabilities and all that stuff. We are also grounded in what I say, doing the basics incredibly well. Uh, and, and that's how this partnership uh, is, is is growing, and I'm sure it's going to thrive, uh, is number one is really strong leadership alignment, real transparency in the relationship. If something's wrong, we talk about it. Uh, and then having a real balanced view of not just innovation, but doing the basics incredibly well. Uh, that's how we focus in Turbo on customer engagement. Um, and that's really exciting to us because when you go and you visit, uh, I, I actually had this chance to go visit her, uh, the RPM office. They were open like 25% and slowly ramping up towards August uh, deadline. Um, and it was amazing to see Turbo on all these screens and people working and live loads moving and all that kind of stuff happening. Um, that was exciting to see. And that actually makes it even more apparent that whatever technology you choose, uh, you need to answer the question, is it going to help your employees do their job better? Are they going to be more delighted by using it? Or are you just replacing a TMS or something with yet another five technologies and your server check? Uh, I think so that's the, that's the heart of what Turbo does for you is uh, unify and collaborate. It's kind of straightforward. Yeah, I think... I think communicating how we use the tools today and how we would like to use the tools in the future and uh, having a seat at the table at Turbo, but Turbo also having a seat at the RPM table to discuss really how we work as an extension of each other is, is, is critical. Um, if we were to build all of the tools out in house, uh, we'd want to have that experience and, and that seamless interaction between Turbo and RPM is critical for us in the future. Awesome. Excellent. Well, thank you both so much for sharing your perspectives and for the discussion. And at this point, we would go ahead and take some questions from those of you in the audience. So if you have not already submitted those, you can do so through the Q&A section in your control panel. And we do have a couple of questions so far, so I will go ahead and dive into those. Um, first question. Let's see, can you speak a bit about the balance between technology and relationships? Should logistics providers put more eggs in one basket or are they equally important? <laughs> um, I can go first if you want, John, but I want to hear your thoughts because you and I slightly touched upon this when we met. Go um, right ahead, yeah, absolutely. Uh, it's a great question, Ryan. Um, uh, I feel like, and, and I want to answer your question, but I want to pose a better question to you. 
the question was, should logistics providers put more eggs in one basket? Are they equally as important? And my question is, do what's right for your customer. The question you should be asking is, what do I need to deliver an amazing customer experience or an amazing partner experience? And if the answer to that is two tools, great. Uh, normally, uh, you know, less tools is better. That's the general trend in technology. And I think so, have an approach of, are we building a set of microservices capabilities that all interact with each other? Because there will absolutely be a need for best of breed. You know, one tool cannot do everything. That's just, then you are like, you know, eh, so, so for in everything. Uh, you will need best of breed. But if your technology stacks are so steel piped and siloed and they don't interact with each other, then it's as good as not having them. So that's why the approach Turbo has taken is we give you that digital platform. We give you a certain set of capabilities, which you will use. And for certain set of capabilities, like in RPM's case, their order management is not in Turbo as of now. We would love for it to be, but as of now, let's be transparent. It's not in Turbo, right? That is a tool that they best of breed really works well and it's amazing and they have it but it's interfaced with Turbo because we have an API first mindset. We have a technology which is an open technology mindset. The point I'm trying to make is there is no rule of thumb that one is better than three or two is better than one. The idea is what's the right thing to do for the customer and no matter what technology you choose, you want a platform like Turbo that can seamlessly connect to everything. Uh, we just recently, I would advise you to go Google Turbo Integration Hub. We just launched a whole new product suite around integration and making integration easier. Um, so I feel like um, that's my quick answer, but John, why don't you chime in? Yeah, I think just to continue on that, I I, I think it's, it's, it's hard to have one without the other. They're both equally important. And in this business, there are plenty of use cases where the relationships and the human side of it just are not going to be replaced anytime soon, at least not with any technology that's out there. And, uh, and that's great. I mean, I, I think that having the relationship uh, with the shipper, with the, uh, with the customer, with the carrier and the driver and the employees is, is not going to go anywhere anytime soon, but the technology allows for us to enhance those experiences and increase those um, those processes, which make them more effective. And like we talked about removing some of the, um, you know, monotonous tasks or the, the repetitive tasks that, that, that don't allow them to give their full attention to the person on the other side of it, whether it be the shipper, the customer, uh, or the, the, the carrier, it, the technology enables or enhances that experience. And, and so I think it's, it's, you know, it's, it's one and the same. And it goes back to the example you gave about the tracking links you send to your customers, right? That's right. You're, you're a very relationship-based transportation provider. Uh, I know some of your customers and they love you. Uh, but imagine if that customer had to call John every day, five times a day to find out what's happening. That relationship is going to go south very quickly. That's right. right? That's right. That's right. <laughs> and that goes to the point of technology enables a more strategic and mutually beneficial relationship. So they kind of go hand in hand. One cannot go with the other. And, and setting it up on the front end, right? You know, because there's going to be issues and we know that there's going to be requests for updates or for information. If you set it up on the front end and say, here's how we're going to handle the updates that are good or, or not necessarily needing further explanation, and then I'll be available to handle the exceptions or the issues when they do occur. They don't happen very often, especially at RPM, but when they do occur, yeah. um, you know, we want to make sure that our people are freed up because the technology is handling that, uh, the stuff that doesn't need um, human intervention. Yeah, that's a good point. Great, thank you both. And next question for you. Uh, it says, how are both companies using technology to mitigate issues such as the global sh chip shortage? Uh, go yeah. ahead. Uh, yeah. Jason, no, I'll take it five minutes. I, I mean, I can see why the question will come up because global chip shortages are in the news every day. And, you know, one of the key aspects is the reason these things happen is everybody in the supply chain network is kind of operating in their own silo and they don't have a proactive or even ability to reactively understand and do better joint planning 
joint coordination and joint addressal of any issue. Uh, so, you know, uh, I want to be clear, it's not like we are building a feature in the product which is going to address global chip shortages, but I can tell you there are going to be hundreds such more shortages in the next year or two years to come. Uh, and I feel like the, the approach we are doing is going to the fundamental of if everybody in the supply chain can coordinate and collaborate on the same digital network, the, the probability of surprises goes down. You can never eliminate fully a for say major event. You cannot do that, right? But how can you handle these better is when you are on the same network, uh, when you are working on the same set of data, uh, and when you can understand and plan and execute together. And that's the definition of collaboration, quite honestly. Yeah, I think that's great. I mean, I, I think using technology to help with visibility, um, we, you know, we're also working with our customers uh, if they have to source their product from different areas, um, discussing where capacity may or may not be, uh, if those uh, areas are going to be, um, you know, more troublesome. Uh, so discussing really what other um opportunities exist besides the traditional way uh, when things were going uh, according to plan when there wasn't a chip shortage uh, some customers weren't thinking about um, you know, what impact it might be to source the product from a different area or if they have to shift their supply chain and so we're working with our customers um, to understand what their needs are and, and what they're doing to get around this as well uh, you know I think that it's created a lot of challenges for for many customers um, <clears throat> You know the demand for for new vehicles, um, the demand for vehicles in general uh, to uh, auto suppliers. You know, there's it's really required them to rethink their supply chain. Um, and you know, as a top vehicle logistics provider that work in all different sectors of the auto industry, you know, we're acutely aware of the biggest challenges that our customers are facing. And um, you know, we're we're doing that through collaboration. Uh, we're, we're bringing solutions that are tech backed um, to try and get through this. And and we're really um, we're we're really excited for what we're going to offer our customers uh, as we move into a um, you know, less hectic, I mean, if a pandemic and then a chip shortage. And um, we're really excited to see what the new, new normal looks like when this is all um, calmed down in the next six to uh, nine months. Great. And you both have touched on this a, a bit throughout uh, the webinar, but the last question that we have for right now, what does collaboration really mean to both RPM and Turbo? How would you define it and why is it so critical? You know, uh, John, I can take a first stab and then you can come there a second is, let me give you guys a framework, a very simple framework. First, number one, uh, whether you agree, well, first decide whether you agree with the statement I'm about to make. 70% of the people that are involved in your supply chain are not within the four walls of your company. They're in different technologies, different zones, different geographies, different languages, everything different. Now, if you agree with that thesis, which is reality, uh, then you're a team. To move one thing from point A to point B, you have a team. Some of your employees, some of the shippers, some of the customers, some of the carriers and freight forwarders and everybody in between. Now, what does collaboration mean? For a good team to succeed, the team has to do two things. Number one, be on the same page. Number two, work towards the same goal. That's it. And what we define collaboration is, is being on the same page is that real-time uh, actionable visibility that everybody gets to the same shipment, all the participants working on it, so that at any given point of time, anybody in the network can really understand exactly what things are. And that real-time nature, uh, contextually relevant, is critical, being on the same page. Working towards the same goal, well, there are countless examples of things that happen when stuff is moving. I'll give you one simple example. Uh, you have exceptions come up, and your carriers need to resolve those exceptions because you have SLA compliance with your shippers. Now, how do you do that today? You send your carrier an email saying, well, what happened? You missed an appointment. You were 30 minutes late, yada, yada, yada. And the carrier responds to you. Then you take it in. You type it in somewhere, and then it goes somewhere else. Um, you're trying to work together, but you're not. Uh, what Turbo does is gives you a carrier exception resolution. 
So if there's an exception, you can assign it to the carrier, which is on your network. The carrier, all has to do is click on that link, gets the beautiful turbo gorgeous user interface, update the exception, and at that very minute, it's all updated in the entire chain. There is no movement of data per se. So that's one example of working towards the same goal. Uh, and I think so in every digitized offers, your, your tender rejection rates are at an all time high and you want to start blasting out um, ad hoc uh, spot bids. Well, you can start going to individual load boards and start calling down your favorite list and do all those things. Or you can use our digital offer, uh, blast that offer out the carrier can negotiate digitally, accept, reject. It's like Uber, you know, bidding on something. Uh, and that's another example of working towards the same goal. I could keep going on and on, but the idea is collaboration is be on the same page, visibility to auto, work towards the same goal, which is execution in context. Uh, and that's how I would define collaboration. John, over to you. Yeah, I think we, I mean, we, we touched on this a little bit earlier, um, but I'll give you more of a real example. So operational excellence is um, extremely important at RPM. Our goal is to be um, extremely sound in our processes. And so we're, we're working with Turbo to make sure that we are using the tools appropriately and we're not going to stop. You know, we're going to stop at first effect. We're going to make sure that not only are our employees um, using the tools, but using them as effectively as possible. And we shared this during our meeting that, that you talked about earlier about our goals as a company and, and how Turbo can help those goals through the tools that, um, that they provide us with. And, it, it's really, I think, you know, collaborating, but also understanding where each company's trying to go. Yeah, we want to be, we want to be the best um, transportation provider in both freight and vehicle. Uh, and but what does that mean? And for us, it's 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 operational excellence. It's creating the best experience for our customers, for our carriers, and our employees. And and taking a deep, deep dive into how Turbo can help us accomplish those goals is really for for us what what collaboration. Uh, means. All right, great. Thank you both. And we have had a couple more come through here. Um, this one, Caton, sounds like for you, um, how does Turbo apply or work for a shipper who uses multiple global LSPs? Uh, okay. Uh, so uh, it, it, to think about it this way, if you're a shipper and you work with multiple global LSPs, uh, each of them you have on Turbo, they are basically a tenant of you. They get Turbo for free, so whether they are tendering loads to you or giving you visibility, you have one central control tower, the real control tower, not that 1980s kind of control tower, uh, where all these LSPs are flowing that business to you, and, and you're, you, you can have full, full visibility and actionability on that. Uh, but it also ties to, well, how, how do you keep things separate? Does one LSP see the other LSPs work when I'm the shipper and I have a central? That goes to the heart of Turbo's network-centric data model. It's a very important point, so I'm going to spend a couple of minutes on this. Uh, see, when we decided to build this product, we did not want to just build yet another logistic technology solution, fundamentally we question what is the underlying technology data model required for this to work? Because LSP A working on shipment A should not be seeing LSP B shipment B, though both A and B have been tendered by the same shipper and the shipper is getting one complete view. So that's what, what built into Turbo is a robust security model and the idea of groups wherein you are only sharing information pertinent to that person's business, and they are not seeing anything else, though all of them are in turbo. It's a, it's a little bit like LinkedIn, you know, like you have your network, you see their updates, um, but if somebody's not in your network, you're probably not gonna see their updates unless they've made it public. Um, so it's the same network-centric data model that's built into it, and the heart of that is our sharing algorithms, which are very robust and privacy centric and allows full control for you as a customer to decide who sees what when. Uh, and, and that's something that we focus on a lot. 
if I can add on that, if I can add to that, so uh, I did not mention earlier in the in the webinar that uh, RPM chose Turbo because we are one of the only uh, privately held uh, multi uh, multi continent uh, operations in with business in North America and EU servicing customers in both continents, and we're extremely proud of that. And Turbo allows for us to be able to accomplish that. Great, thank you both. And next question here, um, Kayton, if you wanna kick this off, are there data sharing concerns or considerations that different parties in the ecosystem need to think about when it comes to enabling digitized shipping? Oh, absolutely. Uh, the, uh, I mean, uh, not just regulatory, but there's also business process, right? Uh, and, and that's why you can't fit a square peg in a round hole, right? That's why you cannot use visibility 1.0 technologies, like you know so many of them, or an old TMS to solve this problem. You need to have a ground up different view of a network centric data model, because it's very important that a, a carrier is not seeing certain information about that shipment, which only you and the shipper are seeing. Uh, a carrier, pro, uh, 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 or if there are two LSPs, uh, they are seeing only what is pertinent to them. Uh, so I think so. It's an absolutely important consideration, uh, and the, the best part is we have built the network-centric data model to answer those very questions. So I'm very happy you asked that uh, a deep question out there. Absolutely. And next question: Currently, the supply chain industry is experiencing bottleneck and capacity constraints. Are these prevailing issues more regionally focused? For example, is the Pacific Northwest experiencing the same constraints as the Southeast? Is that something you guys can speak to? Only John can speak to that. <laughs> I mean, some days I, I wish that it was just uh, in one region or the other, but I think overall um, the entire industry is experiencing bottlenecks in capacity. Um, some corridors, some lanes are um, a little bit easier uh, based on available trucks or based on um, the desire to go where the shipment um, is going to deliver out in. But um, overall, there is uh, a, there was a lot of pent up demand coming out of the pandemic and uh, the supply of trucks is nowhere near uh, the amount of available shipments every day. And uh, unfortunately, it's not uh, it's not just in one region or the other. It's, it's across the country. All right. Well, it looks like that is all of the questions that we have. So thank you all for taking the time to listen in today. Thank you so much to our friends at Turbo for partnering with us on today's presentation. And of course, thank you to John and RPM and Caden for being here to share your insights with us today. As I mentioned earlier, we will also be sending a link to the recording of this webinar tomorrow via the email that you use to register in case you would like to view it on demand or share it with your colleagues. We appreciate you being here and hope you'll join us again for another webinar very soon. Thank you all. Thank you so much, everybody. Stay safe. Thank you.